to bring it in our relationship with God. And say, I came to church for a couple weeks. I danced in church for a couple weeks. And now I know and love God. But it takes more than what you see in the world. The Bible does declare that. It said, beseech ye therefore, my brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable servant. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And while we're trying to conform our relationship with God to the way the, way, the, way the world has their relationships. Your pain, his glory. Uh-huh. And in the years that me and my wife have been married, you have some ups and downs. You have some things, you have some things that you go through. Sometimes money is tight. Sometimes money is overflowing. Sometimes we're laughing and smiling. Sometimes we're crying. Sometimes we move to this house and sometimes we move to that house. But in the midst of all of that, going through the ups and downs, going through the tribulations, going through the pain of what it is to mesh together as one. To build a relationship together as one. It causes for some sacrifice. It causes me to understand who my wife is. And it causes for my wife to understand who I am. And through that time of us being together, every year you learn a little more about each other. You learn some things that she doesn't like. She learns some things about me she doesn't like. We have this joke that we always always go back and forth with each other where something comes up and I say, well, I didn't read that in in the fire plan. I didn't know about that part. She would throw that out there and say, see, all right. See, if I read that fire print and seen some of those things about you, I don't know. <laughs> There's some things that when you are together as one and building a relationship, yes, yes, Lord. building a relationship, you're getting to know each other. Building a relationship with God and getting to that place where we can truly love God even when it hurts, it causes for us to get to know him. Yes. One part of the scripture says uh, that to, to, to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Now the issue that we have now is when you have religion, you do not want to suffer. But when you have a relationship, you're willing to suffer. So what happens is when now, and when you say it, you, you throw out that word religion, you know, people, people kind of get a little uneasy. They, they get a little, you know, they talking bad about religion, but James talks about pure religion. So I'm not coming against religion. I'm talking about the traditions of man that make us think we know who God is. And God is trying to take us outside of what we do to think we know who God is into a place of relationship. Because it's in relationship where you get to know who he is. You get to know his inner heart and his inner being. You get to know the things of his mind and the things of his heart. And when you look at the word, what happens is we read this word, we study the word, we get knowledge in the word, and we get puffed up thinking we know who God is. The Bible declares that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. And when you read down more in the scripture, and it says, and, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now what you have now, you read the word and you think you know who God is. But there's a difference between reading this little word and understanding who the living word is. Because what happens is we read the word and think we know who God is. But when it comes to the living word, we can't understand who he is. And I can break it down when Jesus walked this earth and he was demonstrating the living word. Those who know the the literal word could not understand him. Because now when they have religion, they were quick to judge. They were quick to stone. They were quick to beat someone up. They were quick to throw someone to the side. And the relationship in the living where God was quick to show grace. He was quick to show love. He was quick to restore. And we're at a place now where we've got to move from the literal word and get to know the living word. The living word has some depth. The living word has some secrets. The living word has some mysteries about it that you may never understand. 
and serving God in his carnal mind, but you can't serve a spiritual God in a carnal mind. And what God is trying to do now, he's trying to build you and bring you to a closer relationship in him. But what he has to do is break down this flesh. He's trying to break down the things that you built up in your flesh to think that you know God. He's trying to break down your traditions and customs that you think you know God. He, he's trying to break down the, your ways and your thinking in your mind, thinking that you know God. Hallelujah. And when he does that, he, he's trying to now expose and bring you to a bigger, deeper relationship where now you are serving him spiritually. Now the things of the spirit, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Because you can read this word, and I'm sure all those, you got pastors and bishops, when you read this word, you can read the same word for 25 years. And one day get up because you're in a situation and read that same word you've been reading for 25 years and somehow that same scripture comes to life. Yeah. 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 Yes. You, read, you read about God being a healer. Yes. But it wasn't until you got sick that you really had to know God for yourself that he was a healer. Yes. When you needed comfort, you, you can talk about the scripture and say God is a comforter. But you have to go through some through things to truly build that relationship to understand that God is truly a comforter. See, at this time that God, when he's trying to build that relationship and he's allowing you to go through certain things and go through certain trials and go through certain tribulations, you're not saying what you heard about God. You're, you're saying what you know about God. I'm sure when Ella Rain stands up and says, my God is a healer. He's not saying what the word said. He's saying what he knows about God. When God, when you can say that, God has touched my mind and he, he's made a way out of no way. You're, you're not reading what the word said. You're saying it because you know it for yourself. When you say that, God, you've kept my mind and you've kept my heart when it was broken in pieces. You're not saying and reading what the word said. And God now, what he's doing, he, he's building a relationship with you. And every time you go through something, he's trying to reveal another aspect of him about who he is. Because it takes time to know every aspect about God. When you get to a place now where you're understanding and seeing you can have a child who is sick. It was easy to quote the scripture, but now when you're at that place, when you're going to the hospital and you see your child laying there, you have to get to that place where you need to, a real relationship with God. I can't get to that place where I'm just quoting scripture. I need to speak as I know and not what I just believe. I need to speak as if, God, you hear me when I don't know you're around. I need to speak and say, God, you are still my light, even in the midst of this darkness. And when we get to this place and we read the scripture and you look at Paul. Paul, who was a Pharisee, a man of the word, a man who knew the law. A man who was going forward but was, was killing and, and, and going forth and persecuting the church. All because of what he thought he knew. He was going forward and he was going through the same traditions and religious customs thinking he knew. He was thinking, thinking he thought he was doing God's work. And even before we can get to the scripture, Paul had to go through some things. He first had to be introduced to God. The Bible does declare that when he was on his way to Damascus, that God came forth and shined a light right on him and knocked him off his feet and blinded him and introduced himself to him. And even in that time, the man who thought he knew God, he said he had to ask, who art thou, Lord? Have you ever gotten to that place? You've been going to church for 15, 20 years, and when you thought you knew God, he brings you to a place where you've got to dig and say, God, I truly don't know you like I thought I did. Because God, I'm going through some issues, I'm going through some pains, 
I'm going through some heartache. I'm going through some dark times. And God, I need you like I've never needed you before. And through the time that Paul was living his life, he's going forth and he's preaching now the gospel. And he's gone through a whole lot of things as an apostle. Being locked up. Being criticized. Being shunned from even the Jews and the other apostles. But he knew what his call was. And even being criticized and sometimes running away from the trouble, sometimes being shipwrecked, sometimes going through some things he's never experienced in his life. All through that, God is trying to reveal himself more to Paul. And it gets now to the scripture where it describes where he's at a place and it said that he, he saw a vision and where he was taken up into the third heavens. Now he Paul has experienced a lot of things. He's gone through a lot of things. He, he's a man that is looked up quite highly. He's known multiple languages. He's preached all over. He, he set, he set our apostles and all the pastors and preachers in place. But now when he gets to this place and he's, and he's taken to the third heavens, God is about to reveal another part of him that he's never experienced before. Right. Now look at the word where, where he's experiencing a third heaven that he could not utter and be lawful to, to repeat. But immediately the Bible declares that there was a thorn that was put. 